What is up, guys? Back on another video on Travel USA. In this video, for those who have seen the Hoover Dam face to face, would describe it as one of the most unbelievable dams in the world. Even those who have never seen the site in person can vouch for the dam's reputation with the height that's equal to being a 60 story building. The Hoover Dam is one of the largest man-made structures in the United States and was the highest dam in the world when it was completed all the way back in 1935. Built during the Great Depression on the Colorado River, the Hoover Dam has since then established itself as an important part of Americans' infrastructure and a representation of technological ingenuity with enough water to regulate roughly two million acres, Hoover Dam doesn't just look powerful, it is powerful. In this video, we're going to take you through the history of the Hoover Dam and see exactly why it is the most protected dam in America. The government was already seeking ways to tame the Colorado through the engineering skills of the Bureau of Reclamation. But with seven states disputing how much of the river's water each could claim, construction of a dam, any dam, was only a dream. But in 1921, Secretary of Commerce Herbert Hoover joined representatives from the seven states to seek out a solution to equal water rights. Hoover proposed to simply divide the area into a lower and upper basin and leave further negotiations to the states within those basins. This compromise paved the way for the Boulder Canyon project to be constructed. And in 1931, a structure that would one day bear Hoover's name began with an explosion. Not only of black powder and dynamite, but one of human tenacity and ingenuity. It was the largest single contract awarded to that time by the federal government. It took the combined resources of six companies forged into a single contracting entity to undertake the mammoth project. But before the first shovel of earth could be removed, the Colorado River had to be diverted from its timeless path. The key was to cut two tunnels through the canyon walls on each side of the river each 56 feet in diameter and approximately 4,000 feet long. The four tunnels took two years to complete. With the tunnels open and copper dams in place, the Colorado River had no choice but to leave its riverbed and flow through the man-made corridors. With the river diverted, Steam shovels dug through as much as 135 feet of silt, mud, and gravel to reach bedrock. And there, Hoover Dam began as a simple square wooden form filled with concrete, followed by more than 3 million cubic yards of concrete over the next two years. Add the adjoining structures, and enough concrete was placed to build a four-foot-wide sidewalk around the Earth's equator. Heat from the setting concrete was predicted to take more than 100 years to cool, but engineers fashioned one-inch steel pipe inside each concrete block before it was poured. A refrigeration plant so massive it could produce a thousand-ton iceberg every day continuously pumped cold water through the pipes, cooling the concrete so construction was never interrupted. This innovative idea helped the entire structure be completed in just five years, two years ahead of schedule. Hoover Dam was built with five million barrels of cement, 18 million pounds of structural steel, 21 million pounds of gates and valves, and 840 miles of pipe. The scale of some of the equipment was beyond the capacity of American highways and railroads. The pipes that would carry water from the reservoir to the generators were so large they could not be shipped, so a manufacturing plant was created to build them at the site. An infrastructure of highways, railroad tracks, and power lines had to be created to move men and materials from outlying areas to the dam site and to supply electricity for construction. An entire town was needed to house the workers
workers who were pouring in from all over America in the midst of the Great Depression. The project averaged 3,500 workers a day, working three shifts, seven days a week with only two days off a year. The pay scale started at $4 a day, a good wage in the midst of the Great Depression sweeping America. Amid the country's economic uncertainty, the workers in this canyon gave new life to the nation's spirit as they gave new life to the desert southwest. This is an engineering victory of the first order. Another great achievement of American resourcefulness, American skill, and American determination. And that is why I have the right once more to congratulate you who have built it for the dam. And on behalf of the nation, to say to you, well done. Franklin Delano Roosevelt dedicated Boulder Dam on September 30, 1935. In 1947, Congress officially named it Hoover Dam. Some call it the most prodigious engineering construction feat since the Great Pyramids of Egypt. When a U.S. Senate committee endorsed construction of Hoover Dam in 1928, its report said, a mighty river, now a source of destruction, is to be curbed and put to work in the interests of society. And so it was. Hoover Dam brought the desert flood control, a reliable supply of water, electrical power, and more. Behind a 726-foot-tall concrete base lies Lake Mead. America's largest man-made lake. Born of the collected waters of the Colorado River, it could cover the entire state of Pennsylvania to the depth of one foot. But held behind Hoover Dam, it is a life-giving source for communities throughout the Southwest. On its way to meet downstream needs, thousands of gallons of water per second flow from Lake Mead through the dam's 17 giant turbines producing clean, non-polluting hydroelectric power. Hoover Dam produces almost four and a half billion kilowatt hours of electricity each year, enough to serve the needs of over one million people. The sale of this power has repaid the entire cost of constructing Hoover Dam and continues to fund the yearly operating and maintenance costs as well. Hoover Dam helped ensure a future for the communities that settled along the river and the low, flat valleys of Southern California and Southwest Arizona. In Las Vegas, Phoenix, Los Angeles, and other smaller cities, Colorado River water delivered from Lake Mead helps meet the needs of millions of people a year. Hoover Dam and other dams along the Colorado River contain the floodwaters spawned each spring by melting snows. And from their reservoirs flows an assured and reliable water supply for water users throughout the basin. Combined with the warm climate and rich soils of the lower Colorado River Basin, water from Lake Mead has created some of the most productive farmland in the country. Farms in Arizona, Southern California, and Mexico, irrigated by these controlled flows, produce over a billion dollars worth of vegetables and fruits throughout the year for dinner tables across the nation. The clear reservoirs and controlled river stretches resulting from construction of Hoover and other dams have created year-round recreational opportunities at the National Park Service's Lake Mead Recreation Area and other locations along the Colorado River. Hoover Dam first helped create and now helps sustain the high quality of life enjoyed by millions of people in the desert southwest. At Hoover Dam and its other projects throughout the west, the Bureau of Reclamation is focused on efficient, effective, environmentally sensitive water resources management to help ensure our limited water supplies can meet the needs of all who depend on them. 
Wherever the system delivers water, life flourishes. Herbert Hoover, engineer, humanitarian, politician, fisherman, and conservationist, believed, as did many others, in a vision where man could affect nature for the good. With every touch of its coarse, concrete skin, and each sparkle that dances behind its crown, Hoover Dam reminds us of the need to dream noble purposes and the strength of the human spirit to achieve great aspirations.